of ophthalmology and uh, there's a question that we got uh, from some of the customers and we wanted to address it with you today. Once you get your box, what do you do with it? Let me save you some time and show you exactly what's going on uh, once you receive the device and uh, uh, some of the steps to take to make sure you get uh, accurate readings each and every time. So just simply open the box, take out the device. You have quick start guide, which will allow you to show the uh, correct and the wrong way of doing things, how to position properly the patient, how to work with the eyelid, and how to position the device. There's also another quick uh, user's guide. It will explain to you all the beeping signals and or lettering uh, on, on the display of the device. Very straightforward, step-by-step -step instructions. Uh, yet again with uh, uh, great images with, which uh, will elaborate and point out some of the things to do and not to do. Uh, also, it comes with a battery. Simply unsnap the back panel. It's a non-proprietary 3-volt button battery. It's good for 3,000 users. You press the center button and hold. With the plus side, just slide the battery in and release the finger. You should have four zeros in the display and the beeping signal, that means the device is ready. Uh, just a cover cap, snap it in. This is just the cap, take it off, and this is the tip, actual tip of the device. This is just a protective cover. Initially, what is suggested to do, on the carry case, there's a calibration tester. The device is pre-calibrated, but it's always good to check uh, first time you, to, you use the device has two little indents you could position and take a quick measurement okay should be a plus or minus one of 20 on the display the device is ready to to work with what we uh, do suggest you could also actually practice a few more measurements on the actual test eye or the calibration tester I also strongly suggest to take few readings actually on your own finger so a couple things to point out, how to hold the device. Three fingers on one side, a thumb on the other. Do not hold it like a pen, it will limit your um, positioning and how to work with it. Three fingers on one side and a thumb on the other. It has a little groove on the side. So with the device, it has a little floater, which is moving up and down. In order to get the floater in, you just simply tilt it back and it goes in and fixates. Turn the device on, position on your finger and the beeping sound will actually help you find a vertical position. The correct position, the beeping will stop. Position, take a measurement. You'll get minus one on the display. Tilt it back for the second reading. Take a measurement. The device uh, shows two on the display, at which point you press the center button that will give you the average of the two readings. Okay? And I got a four on my finger. So now let's proceed to the eye. So there are no consumables or tips just use alcohol swab between the patients. Take the device, wipe off the tip of the device with the tip facing downwards. We don't want alcohol to go inside the body of the device. Uh, it's not going to do anything to the device, it just uh, will take a little longer to, for the alcohol to evaporate. So simply swab it off. We do have a gentleman here that uh, will help us to demonstrate. Thank you, Matt, for being with us. So patient positioning, it's, it's a key point here because uh, we want to uh, position the patient correctly because we need to get that head as horizontal as possible. So we, here we're using a chair. Uh, the patient could be also uh, in supine position as well. So the idea is to get the head as horizontal as possible. So Matt, if I may just sit a little closer to the edge of the chair. So we have some angle on a patient's back. Then there is less angle on the patient's neck. Okay, so it, when, when, uh, if Matt is sitting straight up, let's say like this, it's harder to get that head position in the correct order, uh, especially with some patients that have some neck issues. So to solve that, sit them a little closer to the edge of the chair. The angle on the back will actually solve most of your uh, the neck uh, problem uh, patients. So tilt the head back as horizontal as possible. Okay, and do ask the patient to extend their finger forward. So what we don't get just a, a pointer to center a patient's eye. Back to the device, three fingers on one side, a thumb on the other, turn the device on, tilt it back, use the edge of your palm for support on a patient's forehead, 
gently pull on the eyelid to make sure the edge of the lid is above the edge of the limbus. So you want one millimeter of sclera visible. Position the tip right over the tarsus, overlaying it again, the sclera, take the first reading. Don't let the lid slide back, just hold it steady. Position, two, and one more time, three. The device gives you a long beep. Uh, we, you have num uh, minus three on the display sequence of readings. It's not the actual IOP. You press the center button, you get the average of the readings, okay? And we're at average 13. On the other eye, you're still on the same side of the patient. So if you're right-handed, you want to be on the left-hand side of the patient because you'd be able to rest the edge of your palm on a patient's forehead. So you just clear off the device, turn it back on. You're always starting off with four zeros. Back on the same side, get the head as horizontal as possible. I do suggest to use your uh, hand just to push that chin up. I also use another hand uh, just for the support for the patient. The thumb forward. So here I use the index finger to get, uh, or the middle finger to get the eyelid upwards. As the eye naturally opens, not to the side. On this side, I use the thumb. Similarly, getting the eye in the right position. One. One thing you want to avoid doing, don't let the lid slide onto the cornea. That's the biggest error. You'll get lower results because the device is calibrated for the lid and sclera. Two, three. You press the button, you get the average of the readings. Okay, so. That was a quick demonstration of the diet antenometer. This is just a protective cap. You put it back in, put it back in the case, and you're ready uh, to store it uh, in a safe uh, way. Man, thank you so much. Uh, so yet again, this was uh, a quick overview of the dieton. Yet again, we appreciate your business. Thank you for uh, ordering the dietons, and uh, we're looking forward to uh, uh, having more uh, more devices being used because it's, as you've noticed, it's done outside of the visual field. It's great for pediatric population because the patient doesn't see anything coming to your eye. There's no need for anesthetic drops, okay? And uh, no replacement tips. The device is pre-calibrated and uh, it's ready to go. Uh, this box also has a training video that comes with it and a couple more extensive uh, more extensive uh, manuals, you could uh, look through that. We also have many more videos on uh, dieton.com, so it's dieton. Uh, and uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to follow up with us. We'll be more than glad to solve any, any questions that you have. Uh, yet again, Team Dieton from the Academy of Ophthalmology. Uh, looking forward to working with you and your team. And uh, hopefully we'll uh, prevent blindness.